I can't stop spending money. Tips on money management for someone with poor self-control. Hi guys, as the title says, I have fairly poor self-control. I don't want to spend more money than I have, so I'm looking for ways to talk myself out of spending money more. Background. Me and my boyfriend live in a one-bedroom apartment. We usually use rent to balance out the portion of the bills one person pays, for example. I buy all the food, pay the phone bill and internet, and he pays all the utilities. So he pays more in rent than I do to compensate for his share of what I pay. Now, I just want to interject into this. One, there's already a problem when... You're living with, you know, a significant other that you're not, like, married to. Because this just brings out a a lot of potential major issues. Like, imagine if you were to get pregnant and you're not married, right? Like, that's a huge issue that might come up. But, also, it's really weird to split the payments down, like, down like this, right? Because, for example, if you were married right you would just have one account and you'd pay for everything out of that one account right so it's kind of like you and your boyfriend are pretending to be married and pretending to pay bills like you're married when you're not and that's not an insult it's just it gives issue to what this situation is right like you should really structure it in a way where you guys split the rent exactly in half and you guys just pay for your food separately, right? Like that would make the most sense right off the bat. So the income is $2,400 per month paid bi-weekly. Rent is $300, my share of $920. Food is $300. Phone is $84. Internet is $60. Insurance is $144. Where I get in trouble is I just got a new credit card in the Capital One Quicksilver 1% cash back. I just turned 18 last June, so I'm extremely inexperienced in the road of credit and how to balance everything. I was doing fine, paying it off every few days. In the last month, I started a new job where I was no longer two minutes away from my apartment in the small suburban town I live in. I started eating out more, spending more on gas, especially with the pricing shooting up. I also started cooking at home less with the stress of college exams coming up this week. Next thing I knew, I had a balance of $1,400 on my cashback card that I didn't realize had accumulated so fast. Now, I'm just going to, again, interject, right? So in this situation, the problem is you're literally using a credit card for your everyday purchases, which you should honestly never do. And you basically proven to yourself at this point that you can't even trust yourself that you're not going to overspend on a credit card. So this shows that you can't actually use this credit card at all for daily expenses, period. Because you're not going to pay it off immediately. Like, you've just proven that. Thus, what you need to do is put this credit card someplace where you don't have immediate access to it. Start using a debit card. And on top of that, get a cheap one dollar notebook and you have like a micro sized notebook if you like carry like a purse or something you can have like a tiny tiny little notebook that you could get from walmart or even on amazon and it's like less than a dollar or a dollar right you can make it look pretty whatever right and you write down every time you spend money so you could keep track of it you're literally going to keep a physical log every time you spend money and if you can't do that then you're going to have to not even use a debit card anymore. You're going to have to start using cash. Like, that's how serious you're going to have to start getting to it because you got to take this very seriously because this sort of, like, 
habit that just appeared is the reason why some people can easily get into like fifty to eighty thousand dollars in credit card debt, right? So you can be super careful. Like this habit that just popped up is like a precursor or a foreshadowing of the potential downfall of you of your financial situation if you were to keep doing this right because that's a very large amount of a balance in a very short amount of time so be very careful now i don't want this to become a problem that snowballs into a debt i can't pay off in a few weeks which is why i just said that i'm very compulsive with my spending and my savings account has fluctuated between two thousand five hundred to eight hundred dollars in the last year I almost don't want to tap into my current $1,000 just in case something happens. I made a payment of $500 when I got paid last week, and I haven't touched the card since I saw what happened. Now, here's the thing. I don't know. Oh, no, you got like you got a current $1,000, right? So in your situation, what I would do, I would keep that $1,000 the way it is right now and start working as hard as I can, maybe do an extra job, right? Do not eat out. Do not buy things while you fill up at the gas station. Do not get anything from the gas station. Just fill up from the gas. Use regular. You don't got to use premium at all, right, for basically any car. Just go to work, drive, make food at home with your boyfriend, and, yeah, just don't go out, right? You don't have the money to go out. You're too poor. You are too poor to go out. So I guess after my unnecessary explanation, I just want to loop back around to this. How can I keep myself from creating this situation again? And again, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but the best thing to do is not have the credit card on your person at all. Put it someplace that is hard to get to or worse. If this is the worst case scenario, you're going to probably have to cut it up. Next, again. Use a debit card, but if you use a debit card, make sure you write down all of your expenses, all of the times that you spend money. Like Every time you use your debit card, you write down the amount and the date, right? Now, the reason why you want to do that is because, technically speaking, since you're using a card, there's still less of an emotional burden on you, right, compared to cash, Now, if you can't stick to using a debit card and writing down all of your expenses, then you're going to have to do cash because then you basically prove to yourself that you cannot control your spending. So first step, put the credit card away, start using a debit card, write down all of your expenses, make sure you keep track of it so that you can see just how much money is actually coming out of you like how much money you're actually spending. Because once you actually see the numbers that are popping up every day, you're like, wait, I spent $20 per day last month on what? And you look at it and you're like, oh my God, right? So it's going to help allow you to be more knowledgeable what's actually going on. Because the problem that people have with using a credit card is that they just, you know, insert here, tap here, swipe here, and they don't even think about it. And that's the problem. They don't even think what they're actually spending. So you got to keep that in mind. I have poor self-control and talk myself into spending money on food out way too much. It's my main unnecessary money drain. I love the feeling of having more in my savings, like when I was up to $2,500 last fall. I felt so proud of myself and happy when I looked at the account. It was the most I had ever saved. I want that feeling again, but giving into food cravings is a demon I struggle to banish. Now, here's the thing. If you're having problems with food cravings, and this is a little bit different than like a financial situation, you're going to have to increase your protein intake. Now, the reason why I say that is because your body naturally gets more full when you have more protein. Now, that could be in the form of peanuts. That could be in the form of like tuna. That could be in the form of some sort of fish. That could be in the form of chicken. Right? And you could get that stuff for pretty cheap. You can learn how to cook stuff yourself, right? There is also pre-made frozen goods at like your local grocery store for like a dollar or less 
per package, which you could save up on a lot of money, is actually very cheap to end up eating healthy, filling yourself up. Because here's the thing, right? The higher the protein intake in a meal, the more full you'll actually end up feeling, and it's also less calories. So by doing this, typically it's actually cheaper, depending on what you're buying, because you're not going out. Two, it's actually healthier. Three, it actually fills you up more. And four, you could actually eat more food. You could end up spending less money eating more food, eating tastier food, getting more bang for your buck, and possibly looking a lot better at the the end of it. So you got to keep that in mind. You know, like people think that you know you get you got to think about it like this too, right? Just think about a fast food burger. Just use that as an example. Let's use like McDonald's as an example. If you were to get a meal at McDonald's, right? You're looking to spend like eight to ten dollars for that meal because you want the fries, the burger, and the soda. Guess what? The amount of food that you actually get for that is trash. It's like barely the size of your fist, right? And you basically spent almost ten bucks for that, and it's over like fifteen hundred calories for that one meal. Right. Whereas if you could just spend like two bucks on some meat and some bread at like Walmart or something, and you know maybe even potatoes, and just make something yourself, you could have like five times the amount of food that's actually less in calories and cheaper, and it fills you up so much more. So just keep that in mind. There's so many different ways to go about doing it, and. You could also do this with just you know writing down how many calories or even what's inside you're eating, right? Because you start to see you're spending more money on food that's less healthier than what you could get, and doesn't even fill you up. So you end up having to go and buy more food later on. Because this is the thing, right? Like if you were to go out for like breakfast, you're gonna get hungry again for lunch, and you're gonna get hungry again for dinner, and then you're gonna get hungry again for another impulse thing, because they're all trash food. So just keep that in mind. Bump up the protein intake. You could buy everything you want at a grocery store. You could save a whole bunch of money, and you could end up saving a lot of money. But again, the best way to control impulses is to be truly aware of your situation. So you got to literally write it out. It's basically the point of like writing your expenses out in like a little notebook so that you could physically see it. Is basically like Going into the front of the mirror in the bathroom when you're butt naked, and you're looking at yourself, and you're like, "Wow, I am not doing well." <laughs> that's that's the kind of situation writing out your expenses is. It's like, "Oh, I screwed up. Oh, I eat too much food. Oh, I really need to do some cardio." Like, it's a good reflection on your financial lifestyle. Feel free to watch more personal finance videos, and go to fortyunbox.com and contact us to learn how to master your money. You could also go into the description down below. Feel free to give your thoughts as well, and stay tuned for more episodes. We'll try to upload pretty often. We always have new weekly episodes, so just stay tuned for more. But either way, you gotta be super careful when it comes to spending money on a credit card. Like that is one of the most dangerous things to do when you're 